New year, new camera, just upgraded to the Sony A7 IV and here are my initial thoughts on this camera. So let's talk about the body first of all, not much difference between this and the A7 III, a little bit enough that I need to change L brackets. So when you buy L brackets specifically for cameras, you're gonna to have to change because they're not just quite lining up. The grip is quite big now, so that's a welcome addition to this. It's much easier to hold and grasp, yet your pinky will still slide off it. And I don't have the biggest of hands and yeah, so I can I can see how people would have issues with that. On the side, and we have the strap holders. I'll probably leave these on because, as you can hear, they're not making any noise. They're quite stiff. So I took the I took the other ones off the A7 III and never put them back on again. The SD card slot. It's a bit. There's a bit of a knack to it. You have to pull down, pull forward, let go. It was a lot easier on the A7 III. On the A7 III, it was much easier, just a fingertip, and that would do it. And then when we look inside the slot, you can see it's giving one slot for a UHS-2 and one slot for a CF, CF Express A. I don't even know what it is. I've never heard of them. I don't, you know, I've never bought cameras that use these kind of slots. So why you'd have one of each, I don't know. Because if you like shooting with two SD cards and depending on the shoot I'm doing, sometimes I do like that just for redundancy. Uh, I may have made a mistake with the SD card situation. So uh, it actually can take CFS Express A slash SD. I just thought it was saying it was a CFS Express A SD card, but there are actually two slots in the slot one section. So you can go with the Express or the UHS two. So there you go, you don't need to change cards. <laughs> I can still use what I've been using for the last two years, which is great. Nice one. Back to the rest of the video. Moving on to the other side, and we have to move that out of the way, and then we have a full HDMI slot, which is nice. Uh, I didn't know about that, so I had to get a new cable. I had to get a lot of new stuff for this. Then on the other side, and a lot of these, as you can see here, you really have to pull these out and then click them in which is quite nice. So they're, they're not going anywhere. So then we have the microphone, we've got headphone, we've got USB-C, and then we've got the multi-port. I can't believe they're still using the multi-port. Like, is there really no better way to control your camera through remote triggers and stuff than the multi-port? Can we not just use the USB-C or just, I don't know. I don't get the multi-port. I don't know why it looks like a micro USB, but it's not micro USB. And if that's the case, why can't you just use USB-C to trigger the camera? It's beyond me, I don't know. But I don't like using them. Moving on to the back of the camera and quite significant changes on that. Flippy out screen, yes. We all missed that. You never know how much you've missed that until you get a camera with one and I've missed that. The buttons, the buttons on here, Listen, listen to this. Oh. It's like having a camera's version to a mechanical keyboard, even though I don't like mechanical keyboards. I much prefer the, the lighter touch of the Apple keyboards because I'm so used to them over the years of using Apple. But when it comes to cameras, it's just, I'm pressing the buttons. I know I've pressed the buttons. So there's a much nicer feel to them. If I compare it to the A7 III, You're probably not even going to hear that. You know, the buttons are so much smaller. Like, look at that. Like, just look. The buttons are so much smaller on the A7 III. So that's nice. They have a nice feel to them. The uh, the joystick at the back for your autofocus has full grip on it. Lovely. Clicks in nicely. Um, yeah. Same again, there's loads of customization on the Sony's, there's loads of that, but the menu system has been improved. We'll talk about that in a second. Up the top then, the uh, what used to be the exposure compensation dial is just a blank dial, it can be whatever you want. I have it mapped to ISO, and then I actually have this mapped to being the exposure comp, because I don't use it as much, so when I'm shooting, I can keep my thumb up here when I'm when I'm when I have it up to my eye, which I shoot usually through the viewfinder. So it's nice. So my exposure triangle now sits here, shutter, ISO, and aperture. So the record button's been moved up to the top. Really convenient. I usually use it on the shutter, but from now on I'll probably just use the button because I'm used to it with the ZVE 10 as well. Um 
And yeah, fully customizable. I customize it to suit my needs and how I like to shoot. And you get separate menus now for photo and video. <laughs> yes, that was what I needed, especially when you use picture profiles. That was a nuisance, an absolute nuisance. On the top layer, there's a lot less options when you initially look at it, but all they've done is they've removed the movie and S and Q to below it. So it works similar to how the Fuji dials work from when I used Fuji, I love that. So now at the bottom, underneath that main dial where you can switch from manual to shutter priority, aperture priority, auto, and then you've got three customizable ones, you can now underneath that select photo, video, and S and Q. And then in the menu section, if you select it, you can have different settings for each part. So when you're in photo, you can have a different shutter speed, ISO, aperture, um, color, creative look, picture profile, that can be off of photography. Then on video, you can have your picture profile, you have your separate uh, shutter speed, ISO and all the rest, the way it should be. Photo should have nothing to do with video. And that really and truly shows how much they've put thought into this as being a hybrid camera. It doesn't have a massive, massive megapixel count. You know, it, it has a 33 megapixel count, which is plenty for my needs. And it means that I still get really good performance in video. I get really good performance in photo. Then I've they've separated the menu system for me that I can have a picture profile of S-Log3 on video and then that's not going to preview and preview my photos in that grayscale kind of look when I'm shooting photos which made no sense in the A7 III for me. Long story short it's a welcomed welcomed long welcomed addition to this and the menu system in the camera I'll show you now is much much improved than the A7 III. Previously, it looked as though they put a lot of effort into the A7 III and then someone who didn't want the job of doing menus procrastinated right up until deadline day and then went, oh! You could see it, the first few pages of the menu of the A7 III kind of made a little bit of sense and then it fell apart because they left it to the last minute. This time around, they've actually put some time and effort into it and I don't even think I'm gonna to need to use my, the my favorite section where you actually select your favorite go to parts of the menu. I think I might just actually memorize and get familiar with how the menu works and just work it that way. This is a lot better. And again, it's another welcomed addition. And yeah, it sounds like I'm saying a lot of great things. I am gonna say one thing though. With the bigger grip, could we not have got a bigger battery? Looks to me we could have got a little bit extra room. That would have given us a bit extra battery life. The battery life on the A7 IV isn't as good as the A7 III. It's been, from any of the reviews I've seen, it's a uh, hundred less photos. Doesn't really, you know, that doesn't really translate really all that much. You're not really going to care if you're shooting, you know, 1,200, 1,500 photos in a day in an event or something like that there. But what you will notice is in video, you just see the numbers start to just fall down and fall down. But the camera is shooting 10-bit, 422 video, didn't understand what any of that meant. All I know is I can use S-Log3, so right here it's ungraded, and there it's graded, and I think it looks nice. I don't do much with the grading, but at least I have nice control on my highlights, there's a nice fall off, and I'm all about having the control. Just while I'm talking about picture profiles as well, while I'm using the S-Log3, there's a great feature on this. I don't know if it's on the A7 III, I never knew to look for it because I didn't use S-Log3, I used HLG3 because it's only, it's only an 8-bit camera. But they have gamma assist display, so that will actually display on the screen here on the camera, uh, kind of like an, a lot has been applied to your S-Log footage. So you can see potentially how it's gonna look when you go to edit. It's just such an easy camera to use, really, really nice. I, I did an event yesterday with a company, this is a short event, and I left the camera on wide focus, so there was it was focusing on the entire area, set it to face priority. And I'm photographing groups of people doing candid shots of people, you know, just uh, mingling and, and, you know, enjoying the crack at this, at this event. And I never failed to focus on the person I wanted to focus on. On the A7 III, it would have got a little bit confused. Oh, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to focus on this person? No, oh, I don't know what to do. This one, if it does focus on the wrong person, kind of move it a little bit out of the way, kind of like focus recompose. So you just move it a, a, a little bit, then come back. Refocus again, you know, half press the shutter off your back focus, well, I, I front focus. So half press the shutter, you caught that person, it catches their eye, then it locks on, stays there. And that's the one thing I've noticed. The autofocus on this is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I can't show you any footage because I don't have any footage to show you, but the autofocus is ridiculous. It locks on and it is so good. It's really quick and well impressed. Now, I should say on this, 
I only have the camera since Saturday. It is now Thursday, so I haven't had much time to mess around with it, but I'm so used to this Sony system, having worked with them over two years now, um, I can see the benefits in this, and it was a worthwhile investment, me switching from the A7 III up to the A7 IV. I think the last thing that's worth talking about is something that people don't make a big deal of, I don't think anyway, not that I've noticed, is the anti-dust protection that they've put into the cameras. Look at that, when it's powered off, the shutters close. The shutters close. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Because Sony cameras are magnets for dust. I would imagine there's still dust getting onto the sensor, but at least it's a lot less. Because I, over my time using the Sony A7 III and when I was shooting my time lapse of loud last year, I had to get myself familiar and used to cleaning the sensor because you really shouldn't be shooting time lapses with dirty sensors because you just can't get rid of the spots. So I was Always, at nearly every shoot I was doing, I was cleaning the sensor beforehand just to get rid of the dust. So I'm, I'm used to it. This will hopefully mitigate some of that extra bit of work that I would have had to do last year. Um, and I think that should be a firmware update to all Sony cameras across the board. Just give us that extra protection, you know? Just let the shutters close and protect the most sensitive part of your camera. Because if the sensor goes, the camera goes. So, leave it at that. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something from this. Like, subscribe, follow me on all the social medias under Mark Duffy Photography. And until the next time, later Gators.